The point is, when we think about how high-dose therapy has entered the field of uh, mantle cell lymphoma treatment, this came from the age where we had no effective options. So dose escalation seemed to be very attractive, and intentionally we have established that as a, as a standard of treatment in first line. But if we look at the data by heart, uh, and this is my first argument against uh, high-dose therapy, is the, the, the data which are really positive on high-dose therapy have been created at the time where no rituximab for example, had been entered treatment. And if you look uh, in the long-term analysis of uh, the, the one randomized trial who tested the role of hydrotherapy, the results in terms of a benefit in PFS and overall survival did not hold true if patients had been pretreated with rituximab. So this is the first argument that the yes argument is not true anymore in the, in the area of novel agents. However, the results look very good, so we could be honest say, well, all in all, it's that excellent, should we skip it? And then we have the triangle trial. And um, you, you asked about the impact of novel agents, and that is something which continuously happens in mantle cell lymphoma. We had a, a series of, of approaches, RSC introduction, rituximab, and then we had all the targeted agents like uh, bortezomib, lenalidomide, temp and uh, most importantly BTK inhibitors. And the recent uh, triangle trial tested the question whether the addition of ibrutinib to the standard of care, including a high dose therapy, could be challenged by integrating uh, a BTK inhibitor. So it was a three arm design, the standard induction, high dose therapy maintenance, and then we tested one arm where ibrutinib was added, and a third arm where even high dose therapy was skipped. And if you look at the data in detail, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, we expected ibrutinib to, to make a difference, but uh, we somehow expected that hydrotherapy would be still a little additive. But if you look at progression-free and overall survival data at this time, uh, and there will be an update at ASH, uh, indeed there is no difference in between the two ibrutinib containing arm, and both are superior to the standard of care. So, and as there is added toxicity by high-dose therapy, if you have ibrutinib in, in the induction, that means better efficacy, less toxicity, and uh, so all in all, there is no role for high-dose therapy anymore.